I bid you welcome. Once again, I bring to you a new topic for your delight, for your exploration, and in this case for your perception, or to assist you in further developing your ways of perceiving what you would think of your reality, your world, your environment, your relationships, even your relationship with yourself. In order to do this, the topic for the day then are the senses themselves, your ability to sense what parts of your senses are human in origin, what parts divine which ones to combine and for what purpose, which of the senses can be accelerated, delved into, deeper understood, more used practically in the times and the moments that you are moving into. So to begin to develop the topic for you, we acknowledge then the simplest of the senses, the physical senses then, those that are considered physiologic to you. In fact, they are physiological capacities within almost all organisms. And these are the ones that provide inputs for your perception. These are the basic senses, those that assist you to operate your body, to classify those things in your life, those that allow you to study to know what you are. And so these then, of course, are associated with the nervous system of your body, which has its own very specific sensory system and designations to each of these. Now this be the simple beginning to our discussion, and, well, it could be enough. As you might imagine, even your simple human olfactory system, that which gives you the ability to sense smell, well, it has well over 10 million receptors associated with this. That seems complex enough, and yet I tell you that out of all of your physical senses, your sense of smell is the least effective at least currently, and this compared to other body types, other mammalian body types of which the human being is one. The traditional five senses then associated with your physiology are then sight and hearing and touch and smell and taste. And yet what we are most concerned with today as we develop and explore this subject are additional senses. Now, to some degree, even your physical scientists have acknowledged that there are other senses, at least five, that they will acknowledge. For instance, the ability to sense pain is one of these. Equilibrioception or balance, kinesthetic motion, acceleration, this is another receptor, another sense that is fairly well established or accepted now. Thermoception, the ability to sense temperature, differences in temperatures that affect your well-being, this is another one. The sense of time, the passing of time, how to use that as part of your perception. This is a little less known, but coming into acknowledgement. For as time becomes a designation of the fourth dimension, it also then must be perceived by you, and so one must acknowledge the presence of that as a sense. Magnetoception, or the ability to know and sense direction, a clear direction, a clear movement in that, and several others that we will also explore at this time. All of these categories, then, are somewhat criticized in your time. However, they are and will be understood much more. And so it is our job as pioneers 
scientific pioneers on the forefront of dimension on all fronts to acknowledge these, to put them into motion for you and to begin to use them, expand them to the best of your ability. So, for the sake of our time together, we will ignore the basic five, trusting that you have understood these to the best of your ability, using them now, and here and there we will touch upon how they may be expanded or deepened a little bit as the others become more available to you as well. The sense of touch, for instance, or tacitation, well, that has more to do with your mechanical receptors, you see. And so it is a mechanical motion, or so it is understood now. But understanding the activation of additional neural receptors in this area, these then become that much more sensitive as you do. For instance, you do not think of your hair or your skin and the follicles there as being truly sensitive to you unless it is truly acted upon, moved upon. However, I tell you that there are so many receptors there that you could sense something near to you as you have at times, but oh, so much further away. You see, understanding your auric field, understanding how far that stretches, which involves other sensory abilities, well, the more that you do that, you could sense something touching your hair from several, several feet or meters away once you understand how and where these receptors are located. Already you know that there is the sensation that you will call, well, tingling or pricking and ticking and like that. Well, what is it that causes that? And what if you were to trigger that or to employ it as if a light switch simply by paying attention, placing awareness in this sensory area, you could almost instantly expand that to several meters away so that you could be aware of someone's nearness almost as soon as they begin to think about you or think about approaching you. That, to some degree, is what I, Gaia, employs when I employ the channel's body in a seminar facilitation, for instance. I direct her body according to the magnetic energy in its nearness. I direct her to whom to address in a seminar. I direct the body to whom will ask a question or participate directly with Gaia using or accelerating this sense ability within her as a channel. On her own, there is the echo, the remembrance that her body was used in such a way, but not the knowledge to direct it on her own. However, perhaps you can see that when the body becomes accustomed to being activated in this way, eventually the body's own memory would be able to act on its own behalf. So you see the same will happen, the same is true of your own bodies. The more there is the knowingness, the perception that you have these sensory abilities available to you, the more you will practice at them, recognize them, test with them until it becomes second nature to you, to your knowingness and to even the more mechanical, physiological aspects of your body. So as we move into the distribution of this topic then, perhaps it is well to begin with what can be called balance. You see, the equilibrioception in you, the sense of balance that allows you to stand and to know where is the horizon, how does the body move in concert with the horizon, in what direction does the body move, when to accelerate its movement in order to maintain its equilibrium, when to rise or fall in order to access this. Well, typically this 
equilibrium is associated with the inner ears and with the momentum that is associated with this. But you see there are also other receptors within your being that simply understand what it is to balance. These are currently then associated with the inner ears and yet I now direct you to think of this as a balance between what you would think of as heaven and earth or above and below a different distribution. When you distribute your weight differently, your stance is different. You are able, for instance, to hold or carry more weight simply because you have distributed your stance to balance that weight. Well, this is the same. In density, you currently balance yourself in order to hold or to maintain a third dimensional stance, a third dimensional body. If for instance, you can redistribute your denser thoughts, your perceptions, and these become lighter in the process than how you balance yourself, yourself, that part of you that manipulates the body, that holds the body, that carries the body, that also then would redistribute balance. And so you would become more balanced in a lighter form or, if you like, rather than a lower sense of gravity, as you have now, you would have a higher sense of gravity, so that the upper portions of your being, of your body, would distribute their density more to your advantage. This would make your walk upon the earth a little bit lighter. It would make your longevity a little bit longer. It would also elongate the physiological body by a bit, a few inches at least, within a course of a few short generational spans, much more after that. Therefore, the human being would become taller. It would stand more erect. You would see that the shoulders would not roll to the forward, where you are always needing to remind yourself to either relax them or roll them back, as you do now. This elongation, then, of the body, simply because its balance is redistributed, would also allow all to do with the appendages, the legs and the arms and the hands, a bit more grace as well. As you reach out for something, you would already almost touch it before you actually came in contact with it because it would have a lighter resonance. The frequency, the equilibrium frequency would bring to you those things already more in balance. You would not need to steady yourself as much as you do now. As you might imagine this, like other topics that we explore, well, it must to some degree be generalized, for certainly it is a topic that we could delve into more and more, deeper and deeper. However, you begin to see how it can benefit you in this exploration. It would be appropriate as well, and we could not overlook the ability to sense, truly sense, or the kinesthetic sense. This form of perception allows the brain to have information that is very relative to the body without the body needing to be completely active or engaged in the ability to sense. So, an in instance, well, the body could, even with eyes closed, know where certain aspects of the body or what is distributed in the room, where it is. You have a kinesthetic relationship to all that you are and all that you know of. So, again, for instance, with your eyes closed, you could perform many different activities. Your knowingness already knows the proximity of certain things in a danger sense or in a calming way. This kinesthetic sense, however, is very undeveloped in humanity for the moment, so that without needing to actually reach for something or touch something, you would have the ability to have that thing touched or retrieved for you. 
So somewhere between what you consider the kinesthetic ability and the telepathic ability, there is a field that rests between these two. I say rest because currently it has not been made active. It is not active because it has not been acknowledged. So acknowledging that there is a field beyond what you know is there, what you can touch, even beyond what you can sense, and the field that surrounds the thing or the person that you wish to be in contact with, that field has a carrier wave, a field of energy. And it is something akin to this kinesthetic sense that enlivens all of the energy between here and there, between this and that, between you and another person. And when this field is enlivened, it becomes active. You become in relationship to it. When you are in relationship with this, it would give you access in some ways to events that would be before they are. For instance, now, if you were to look upon a counter and you see a simple jug that is there and say to yourself, oh, that is placed very close to the edge, more than likely it could easily become tipped over, I had better straighten it up. Well, what if your eyes were closed or you were in a different room and you did not see that jug on the counter? You would not have that awareness that it is precarious or unsafe in its present position. The field that I described to you in this discussion then would alert you to that so that with your thought and with your body's awareness, if you chose to, you could act upon that to change that, you see? So you have the kinesthetic ability to move something and the telepathic ability to know that something needs to be moved. It requires both of these senses that are currently considered separate, distinct from each other. And yet what I say to you is that as the human body, the being, continues to develop, these will come into one. The senses that you consider to be different, distinct from one another, are more linked to each other than what you believe. You see? For instance, you smell something and then you see it. You see something and then you touch it. These are considered separate, but see how almost automatic they are for you. They relate to one another. Similarly, the senses that I described to you also relate not only to each other, but also to those senses that you already have. Now we will touch upon the sense thermoception, if you like. It is the sensing of heat, or if you like, how heat and cold work together, either by the skin or by any of the other internal messages that you release, reflect from the body as well. These are in the process of changing now. Currently, your ability to sense temperature happens when you walk out into the cold, when you become damp within or without, when you become overheated. But as you well know, a topic of discussion for much time now has been the temperature around the world, climate change, global warming, or how you will name it. Well, certainly as residents of the earth, it is important to acknowledge then that it is not only the earth's temperature that is changing and reflecting itself differently as the earth changes so will the human body change therefore this ability to sense and react respond to temperature will become very different for the human being as well your bodies will become slightly more moist this will give them the appearance then, a more youthful appearance over time in a few generations. So in essence, the bodies, the skin, will not dry as much. Of course, you order to maintain this, there will need to be more internal water, even if you will drink less external water. So here the balance the equilibrium, if you like, the balance in the body, the body's makeup will begin to restructure itself as well. The body will be able to tolerate both more heat 
and more cold. It depends upon where one will make their home again over the course of the next few generations and relatively quickly the organs within the bodies will be able to sense temperature, react and respond to temperature and you will have the ability to cause yourself to warm up from within without needing external temperatures to rise or fall as much to graduate your own temperature. This ability, this sense you already have. In fact, most of what I described to you is already present within you and as you might imagine the beauty of the human vessel, the human being, is the ability to remake itself as needed. And that is what it is in the process of doing now. Each time that you see that the earth is remaking itself, it is important that you note that you are also remaking yourself. You are not waiting for the earth to change so that you can then change. You are changing along with the earth. But particularly because that is the case, you do not see or always sense that taking place. Also, because some of these sensory abilities you have not put into use yet, you have not put into practice yet, you do not know, you cannot sense that they are with you. However, future generations will already be aware of that and in some times they will follow your lead and in other times you will follow theirs. In either case, these are all changes that are now ongoing, so much so that I bring them to your attention now. Not as news of what will be in another life or the next time you choose to incarnate upon the earth, but as that which is true now. Of that which at least you can begin to recognize, to acknowledge, and to put into practice or use when you are able to do so, or at the very least on an experimentation basis. Of course you are now have the ability to sense pain. You understand the signals that are coming to you. Do not touch the hot stove. You will get burned. You see so you have not only the ability to sense pain when it is taking place or shortly after but by certain inference you have the ability to sense pain before it were to happen by knowing of that experience that will cause pain. Well, that is a sense that can be developed much beyond that so that you can also then begin to know those things that will specifically cause pleasure to certain receptors. For the most part, humanity has only been able to boldly act upon this receptor in the sexual act. It knows where the pleasure centers are and it directs its awareness in that area. But here, even to that which is non-physical, you can attract, pull, literally from the prana that surrounds you, those things, those aspects, those little tiny particles of light that bring to a being pleasure. Pleasure comes in the form of knowing wellness. To know that all is well in one's world brings pleasure. It is not simply a knowing of peace. It is a true and a deeper and a more expansive kind of pleasure. Again, I tell you that humanity has become overly comfortable with the very simple pleasure pain receptors. However, the human body, the human being, has been developed and designed to display much more beautiful characteristics than that. Therefore, your ability to sense and to draw to you pleasurable thoughts rather than worrisome ones such as you do now, this is already very much a part of your awareness. How do you draw this to you as an example? First, by becoming aware. As with all things, awareness, first awareness is the key. You become aware that you are surrounded, yes, by the same field that we have called upon several times and in several subjects, and becoming aware of that field, you can begin to sense all that the field contains that relates to you.
And so you must, in essence, begin to train yourselves to acknowledge what lies just beyond the physical. Then what lies just beyond just that. And layer by layer, you begin to move into a different form of awareness so that you become aware of more of the different aspects that make your environment whole. Your environment then is that which contains you, is that which receives you, is that which acknowledges you, and is that which gives you or feeds you all that you would need at a certain time. Therefore, your environment does contain, should contain, all that you need in the form of information to guide you. That is the purpose of this discussion. You see, the purpose is not simply to entertain you with a new topic that shows to you the different senses or the new toys that you can play with. No. As you become more aware of your environment and everything that it contains, it becomes your tool. It becomes more knowledge for you, true and practical knowledge. I tell you that in your time you have become overly attached to information, a subject that we have spoken of before as well. Information, while practical, does not always say to you what you are, what you are in the business of doing, how you are growing, what is truly available to you, or how to test it out. Information gives to you theories for you to consider, ideas to agree or disagree with. And here, in these discourses, it is my hope to go beyond the information cycle so that you can indeed receive then the subject matters new for the most part in ways that all parts of you will respond to them with a knowing, with a wanting, with a desire to have and to be and therefore to grow. Therefore the purpose of all of these discussions is that it is growth, it is expansion, it is well-being and it is for you to then, whenever possible, share with others, use to the best of your abilities the guidance that comes forth for the benefit of the future generations as well. As we continue then to move into other aspects, we can also sense that there are certain senses that you would consider that belong to other animals and not to the human animal. For instance, there is a very simple one, echolocation, attributed, as you might know, to the cetaceans and even to the bats. Well, they have the ability to determine or to orient themselves and then to reflect that orientation to use for navigation or direction or to even identify what is in their environment that they need be cautious of. It has not occurred to you that as you are related to all other things upon the earth that you also have or will have this ability. You do not have this now and in this case I will tell you that any amount of experimentation will not necessarily lead to success and yet in this case I tell you that it is already also with you and that in some cases you will have more ability to use this as the earth moves into some of its changes as well. As the air becomes a bit more moist for the planet, your ability to sense in this area, to use your bodies a bit more like sonar, that will also come better for you. As the conditions in the air, the air molecules also begin to shift and to change, this will also allow you to have or to use this to navigate your life a little bit better. Now, as some of these senses become more prominent for you, I will tell you that there are some as well that will become a little bit less easy for you. 
and this will depend upon the individual. For instance, with each individual there are certain senses that are stronger than others, taste in one, smell in another, touch or sensitivity better still. In the beginning, as you begin to develop some of these newer senses, it will seem to you, at least in the beginning, that your other more common senses are less available to you or that they are less useful to you. Particularly, I will tell you that your sense of smell will be reduced and because your sense of smell will, so will then your sense of taste, which is very associated with this. However, the additional benefit of knowing or sensing your environment so much better in the ways that have been described to you that will be benefit enough, at least in the beginning, while there is a rebalancing of all of the other sensory abilities. To continue, then, the ability to echolocate or to have a sonar between you and others that you are considering family, friends of family, environment, extended family, circles of family, you will have the ability to sense their condition, to sense their well-being, to sense whether they are in safety or in danger, whether or not they require your attention or not. Imagine then, for instance, that the wolf can leave her cubs several, many miles away and know that they are in relative safety or at the same time become deeply aware that their immediate response is needed and then time to return to the den. Well, it will be the same with you as well. Not simply because you have the telephone ability now that will transport you quickly many miles of distance, but because you will have the ability to use these sensory perceptions to perceive the relative wellness, the relative calm and wellness of all of the different circles or groups of those that you are associated with it, likely as well if your true position, if your true immediate presence is needed, you will have the ability to sense that and to make haste to present yourself in that way as well. Again, I tell you that this is already moving into position for you, but that this will not be as available to you until the earth begins to make some more of its changes that are necessary as well. Another ability that you will have to gain as well is literally the ability to detect more of what is taking place in your immediate environment. Currently, you have somewhat of a knowing. It is yours, it is yours exclusively, it is a shared environment, or it is one in which you have marked your territory, so to speak. But humanity is vague in this area. It does not truly have clearly defined boundaries or territories. Again, perhaps accepting the sexual state or relationship or conditions that it has when its variety of relationships or mates or like that. Again, in this case, this will begin to change so that similar to other animals, you will have the ability to have a sense associated with a special kind of behavior, certain characteristics that will simply alert you, bring to you more knowledge, more awareness than what you have now. There are organs associated with this, but they have not been given sufficient input, sufficient awareness, so they have not grown. In other words, as you continue to evolve in this way, the human body will have on its skin other receptors that again will travel, will sense a much, much greater distance away than they do now, allowing for more knowledge of your immediate environment as you have now and being able to monitor several other environments all at the same time. Relative to your sense of taste, as we move back and forth between your physical, physiological senses and the newer ones that I am describing to you, your sense of taste will temporarily 
ease back a bit. And this, by way of saying that perhaps foods will not taste nearly as well, nearly as appetizing as they did. You will say to yourself, perhaps, well, they have not cooked it, they have not prepared it the same way as they once did. They have changed the recipe, or I now prefer this taste or another taste more or less. Here I tell you that it is not necessarily in the preparation nor in the ingredients themselves, but it is in the humanities able literally to taste. So the sense of taste is on its lessening side of the scale now and will continue to do so that much more at least for one generation, perhaps two, until it begins to return. The downside of this is that you must think carefully before you add salt, for instance, to your foods. You will have an over-craving, if you like, for salt, an over-craving for sugar or sweet, you see, because the body's then losing its ability to have a smaller amount of this and to identify it in the taste buds. Instead, it will crave more. It will say it is not enough, not prepared right, as we have said. And so you will perhaps choose more of both the salt and the sweet. And so when in doubt, counsel would be to choose the mid-range of these until you become accustomed to what your body now prefers. Likewise, those things that are considered bitter, well, they will seem even that much more bitter, the bitter pill to swallow, the bitter food to swallow. And likewise, as well, to the other side, those things that are considered hot or to the spice, they will also be on the minimum side as well. So something to become accustomed to or acknowledge for the time being, while the benefit of the other senses rearrange the body as well. Along with other aspects of sight, you will have the added benefit of being able to see in lower light conditions here and there and However, you will have a more difficult time seeing in brighter light for the time being as well. Again, as it is seen at this time, at least one generation, perhaps two. However, the interesting ability to see at night or in the dark, that will be interesting and tantalizing to you, so that if you find yourself needing to shield your eyes or to wear sunglasses more often than you have before, well, that is to be expected. The eyes will become more sensitive in general. I tell you as well that as an anomaly of this, the eyes will simply tear more than they have before. And you will wonder, is it a new allergy that I have not been aware of before? Your eyes in general will be more sensitive. They will seem at times a little bit more red round the edges, as if you will say you have not rested well, slept well. All of these are but anomalies of the very small nerve endings within and behind the eyes to increase your ability to see and to sense in low light. So you see it is both now. The eyes will begin to link your ability, your sense of vision. This will begin to link with other sensory abilities to not only see in lower light but to sense what is taking place in lower light as well. And so all of this is in the making as well. As we continue then, it is important to note what can be called electroreception, or as we have said earlier, the ability to detect certain electro fields, electric fields. And so we have described earlier that field between the kinesthetic ability there, the telepathic ability. Between that, well, it is the electric field and, as you will soon see as well, the magnetic field. The electromagnetic field is what exists between here and there, between you and this or that. And so this becomes more active because it is becoming more active upon and within the earth as well. Remember, all that affects or befalls the earth also affects humanity as the greater 
race or the greater race of beings upon the earth as well. So as the electric magnetic field round the earth becomes more active, so does the field both within and around the human being as well. And so changes in your ability to have electro reception will mean that you can sense those things that are more than in your immediate vicinity. These things will then extend further from you. You will be able to sense, for instance, a plant, a house plant in another room that requires water or nurturing or sunshine because your field will naturally and easily touch that field. You see? So here's a small, small example. You will choose to be near some individuals and further away from others as you do now. But this will become more static for you. In other words, it will be very, very difficult for you to be in the same room with some individuals where before you would simply have a certain preference. I choose this person. I do not choose this this environment but not the other well in this case it will become an imperative well I can do it but for 10 minutes then I certainly must go I must you see particularly where it comes to electric fields or electro relationships these will attract and repel as you might imagine but even more so all of the fields around the earth become static, become a little bit more erratic now. This will affect all of your social communication. It will give you the additional ability to sense, a greater capacity for sensing what is taking place in another room, in another environment. So here I tell you, do not become of the paranoid sort, simply because you have more of an awareness of what gathers nearby does not necessarily mean that all is relevant to you or effective, important to you. You see, currently, all that comes near you, you assume has to do with you. You are in relationship with that or with them. Well, if you begin to extend your field of awareness, it would be almost plausible for you to say, well, all of that also relates to me then, because now that is within my field. So here you will need to, well, train yourselves a little bit. Recognize that you have access to a greater field, but that all that is within it, while it is a part of you, does not require a participation by you. So you can become aware of that which is in your field without needing to act upon that which is in your field. For instance, you will note that there are several within the animal community, the animal species, that can sense that there is a predator nearby. And then you would wonder, well, why don't they do something about it? Why don't they run away already? Why don't they hide? Well, you see, the receptors that they have give them the perception that they are not in danger yet. It does not concern them yet. And it is not simply because the predator has not taken note of them yet. It is because they truly sense the energy in that field. So you will be doing the same. You will sense certain energies around you, become a part of them, include them in your reality, in your world, perceive them, but not necessarily act or do anything about it. So here you will begin to learn the being rather than doing. How you can become much more aware of your world, your part in the world, participating in the world, in the ways and the moments that count, rather than simply inserting yourself in any moment or any time that you hear your name called as you do now. So there are several benefits that come to you. As we continue to explore this, then you will begin to see that the body has 
other newer ways to relate to all that is around it. And now we touch then upon the magnetic reception, magnetoreception, if you like, which is simply put the ability to detect, to perceive the magnetic fields that are around you. The body uses these. This is not new. You receive this, perceive this in terms of altitude, in terms of location. You are able to feel and sense the equilibrium, the body's ability to know if it is too far underneath the water. It is affected. If it is too far, then above the water, high atop a mountain, it is affected. The magnetic field is also affected and this then however will be enhanced in other ways so that you will be able to detect much more the sense of pressure associated with the magnetic receptions then as well and of course you already have this relating to water or depth of water however this will then give you more abilities to sense how to well inflate or deflate certain organs of the body in order that they are more balanced in a certain way. Your body does this to some degrees now, even what you would term gas, bloating or like that, or the ear's ability to pressurize itself, you see. So the body already knows of this discussion, of this topic, but you do not have the ability to choose this for yourself, to make active this. And so here you have then that which is already then moving into different parts of your awareness. You have the ability then to have all of the physical senses of your being and to have them enhanced, to have them truly enhanced within you, to use them to a greater ability than you do now. There are signals in the environment both within and without that will begin to guide you in this respect, what I describe to you is already almost automatic. Therefore, there is nothing for you to do in this arena. However, the more that you can perceive the subtle changes as well as the less subtle changes within your being, within your body, this will be to your great and greater advantage. Because the environments, as you well know and see, are changing and how they are changing now in your life and in your awareness. Therefore, use the senses that you have to the best of your ability. Note them when you taste something, truly taste it. The same with touch. Feel the fine wood grain or the smoothness of a stone or the jaggedness of glass. Truly sense with all of your being the physical senses that you have and as you do so you will also begin to enable as quickly as possible those that are already in your subtle region. You can begin to note them, enlarge your field of awareness and you will see that it includes many more of these the empirical or known senses and those that are less common or the receptive field senses, the ability to transduce from the physical world into the realm of the mind. Begin to draw these into your awareness and the earth will begin to signal changes to your physiology and to all parts of your being so that you will be able to participate in these in the soonest and most available way. Well, sweet ones, the topic has been a short and quick jaunt into a subject, one that as always we will return to, we will revisit, we will build upon and give to you not simply more information, but knowledge that is available, useful and practical to you at the soonest next opportunity. I bid you good day.